Coming up on today's Airborne, Dynon Avionics announces the new Skyview, featuring Skyview Touch. Spencer Suderman sets a new inverted spin record. And iFly GPS is now available on Android tablets and phones. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. It almost seems that modern instrumentation in avionics displays can't get any better, but Dynon is here to say there's more to come. Dynon Avionics has unveiled the new Skyview integrated avionics system. This latest edition of Skyview includes Skyview Touch, two new control panels, and dozens of new features. Skyview Touch adds the convenience of touch when you want it but keeps a full set of buttons and joystick knobs for precise control and turbulence. Capacitive multi-touch technology allows natural actions such as two-finger pinch to zoom on the map. The Skyview Touch retains the sunlight readable and glare rejecting screen. The knob control panel has dedicated controls for the most frequently adjusted items, such as altitude bug, altimeter setting, and heading and track bug. Pilots new to glass can display the familiar six-pack primary flight instruments and switch between six-pack and the modernized EFIS display instantaneously. Loaded with numerous other features, the new Dynon Skyview with Skyview Touch will be available next month. We all know that flat spins are bad and inverted flat spins are terrible, but what would scare the heck out of most pilots is a lot of fun for airshow pilot Spencer Suderman. On March 13th, Suderman set a new record of 81 turns and in an inverted flat spin, breaking the old record of 78 turns. This was his third attempt to set this record. When you're in an inverted flat spin, you come down like a lead frisbee. This meant that Suderman had to climb to 23,000 feet to get the job done. He worked with ATC to allow him to climb to that altitude in an oxygen-equipped VFR Pitts S2B. Suderman said, quote, The third time's a charm. Because this was my third time doing it, I had learned so much from the first two attempts, end quote. Both Suderman and his aircraft were outfitted with numerous cameras, and you can watch the action on YouTube by searching for Suderman Spin Record. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Ben 16 KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Over the past two decades, no resource has compiled as much expert valued information about the sport plane world than the Sport Plane Resource Guide. Over 1,500 pages, hundreds of aircraft, dozens of how-tos and directories. All this and more will be coming to the sport aviation world soon with the new all-electronic and updatable Sport Plane Resource Guide for your iPad, iPhone, Kindle, tablet, PC, or other electronic devices. Get your order in now www.sportplane.com Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The Apple iPad may not be the tool that suits everyone, and iOS application providers are now expanding to Android platforms, such as the case with Adventure Pilot who's introducing the iFly GPS app for Android. iFly GPS is full featured on both the Android and iOS platforms, and there are no significant differences in capabilities across these platforms. iFly GPS for Android delivers the same full featured moving map navigation found on the iPad version, with advanced features like geo-referenced high def charts, approach plates, decluttered vector mode, Auto Taxi Plus, Real View, and more. iFly GPS is endorsed by X-Plane for GPS, and it's fully functional when using an Android tablet 
in conjunction with X-Plane Flight Simulator. iFly GPS for Android works on most tablets and phones operating Android 4.0 or higher, and it's available on the Google Play Store and the App Store with a 30-day free trial. It's Friday at last, and that means it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. This week, it looks like Jim has about had it with the battle over the Santa Monica Airport. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Let me try to keep this one short, or try to anyway. I'm a little frosted right now because I read something this morning that just absolutely galled me. It takes a lot to get a rise out of me these days simply because, man, I have just seen so much idiocy over the years. It's really hard at this point to surprise me. But apparently a woman stood up, among others, stood up at the Santa Monica public hearings in which Santa Monica is now trying to shut down the airport and basically said that takeoffs are terrorism, that flying general aviation airplanes, the business, the recreational pursuits, terrorized her and were equivalent to terrorism. There were people making statements about the environmental impact of the aviation being equivalent to Love Canal. The hyperbole was out of control. We had people there speaking up for us. They made sense. They were calm. They were rational. And the problem here is I think it's a time to be a little bit less calm, to keep being rational, but to be aggressive, to call idiocy what it is, idiocy, to counter it. But more important at this point, to start making a case for why aviation is important, why it's a critical infrastructure, why it's even important as a recreational pursuit, and fight back. We're not loud enough. We're not aggressive enough. We, we take this stuff lying down, and it's not right. Because the problem is, is these ridiculous, idiotic sound bites make the news. Everybody hears them. They agree with them because, well, it's just airplanes. They don't affect me. But they have no problem running their cars, their motorcycles, their lawnmowers, all the other things that, quote, unquote, pollute or make noise. But that's okay because they need them. And more important, there's a couple of thousand NIMBYs who move next to an airport and expect the airport to change because, well, they're important and they got there. Garbage. Nonsense. Ridiculous. Folks, we can't take much more of this kind of damage. We're, we're, we're dying the death of a thousand cuts. And unless we start finding more aggressive, more public, more visible, more profound ways to fight back, the idiots are going to rule the day. And wouldn't that be a shame? For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, this is Jim Campbell. And boy, somebody needs, needs to make an example out of Santa Monica. These folks are nuts. When an aviation company adds the title very fast to the name of a new product, it gets your attention. Dar Sakata has delivered the first two production versions of the newest member of its TBM family, the TBM 900. They were presented to their pilot owner customers last week during a ceremony at Fantasia Flight Park in Polk City, Florida. One of the TBM 900's first customers is Larry Glazer, who is also chairman of the TBM Owners and Pilots Association. Glazer said, quote, Our organization appreciates its excellent relationship with Dar Sakata, which has been responsive to our request and continued willingness to go the extra mile to make the customers happy, end quote. Based on its enhancements, the TBM 900 has generated significant interest among pilots, owners, and operators, with more than 40 already ordered. Airborne's brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. Since its inception, Redbird Flight Simulations has been dedicated to developing new training technologies and processes in an ongoing effort to make aviation safer, more affordable, and more accessible. Consider Redbird's flagship flight training device, the FMX, a superior quality, full motion, feature-rich advanced aviation training device priced with real-world flight training organizations in mind. With standard features that are anything but standard, such as wraparound visuals, a fully enclosed cockpit, quick change configurations, scenario-based training compatibility, and of course, an electric motion platform, the FMX serves up a level of realism that is simply unavailable in other training devices on the market. For more information on Redbird Flight Simulations, the Redbird FMX, 
and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. The Wisconsin Legislature has passed legislation that will exempt aircraft parts, services, and labor from sales tax. Tom Patton reports. Five of Wisconsin's surrounding states had already passed similar legislation, and local maintenance facilities and FBOs were feeling competitive pressure from out-of-state businesses looking to capitalize on their tax advantage. The legislation protects the local infrastructure of maintenance facilities for the Wisconsin aviation community, according to Jonathan Harger, EAA government advocacy specialist. Harger said, quote, when other states are only a 45-minute flight away, and pilots could save $1,000 on a $20,000 engine overhaul, going out of state becomes an easy decision for many GA pilots. Harger said the repair stations, most of which are small businesses, will once again be regionally competitive and retain jobs, and aircraft owners get the benefit of local and competitive repair stations. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. What else could we ask for? It's a motorcycle, an airplane, a helicopter, a gyroplane, and a boat. Someone finally invented the ultimate toy. The vehicle is the Trixformer, which is an electric-powered two-seat motorcycle called the Trix Cycle that's formed the centerpiece of the modular concept. The motorcycle is an open cabin formed by a stainless steel cage. From there, the Trick Cycle is equipped with a docking system, which allows coupling the motorcycle with several devices. Once coupled, the Trixformer becomes an airplane, a gyroplane, a helicopter, and a boat. The company claims that, quote, modern navigation and modern air traffic control systems are designed to fly aircraft by computer using GPS navigation enhanced by specially designed ground stations and electronic communication between air traffic control centers and autopilots installed in every aircraft, end quote. They say this will eliminate human error. Yeah, right. The Trixformer will be on display from April 9th through April 12th in Friedrichshafen, Germany. Well, that's our program. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.